What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery and today I want to talk about violence in art. Now <clears throat> some people may be maybe following me along, some people may not, but let's go. I was this happened yesterday. I was on the internet and I was just searching through you know, old master paintings and drawings of other artists, just for inspiration, like I normally do. Whenever I have kind of like a, like a, like a brain cramp, so to speak, where whenever I'm not in it, I'm, I'm not inspired, what I do is I tend to go to other artists' pages and see different art, <clears throat> just as a kind of a jolt of inspiration. And in that search, I was looking through the quote-unquote old master's paintings and you know the, the real big murals you see you know and I was just, I, I noticed I said you know what there's a lot of violence in the paintings of old and from what I've from, from what I see and from what I've gathered there was more violence in paintings then than there are now however there's more violence in cartoons now than there were then but there's always been violence in cartoons and stuff but I was wondering how deep does this run when it comes to violence in art in art and it seems like it's almost Like it's, like it's almost one and the same at times. Most of the cartoons that I watched growing up, I'm pretty sure you grew up with too, although they were kid-friendly, kind of, if you want to call it that, they were violent when you, when you really break it down. You had Tom and Jerry, which was very violent. You had a cat and a mouse who were always depicted as enemies. That's the thing. A, a lot, a lot of the times, what we, what we may consider what they call natural enemies in the animal kingdom, there are also cases where that's not true. Like I've seen cases, I've seen actual footage of a cat and a mouse laying next to each other, no problems whatsoever, or a cat and a dog next to each other, no problem. But when you see cartoons like Tom and Jerry, they were violent, and. Every single every single clip you saw was a violent clip. Tom would get blown up. Jerry would get thrown around by his tail, you know, stuff like that. Or you have Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Remember uh, the cartoon with Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and uh, Elmer Fudd? We had the rabbit season and duck season. I love those particular cartoons. We just say rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season. Duck season, the Elmer Fudd would keep shooting Daffy Duck and his beak would spin around his face. That was very violent. Or the Wally e. Coyote and Roadrunner, which is my favorite cartoon. Wally e. Coyote and, and, and Roadrunner were my favorite cartoons to watch ever as a child. I, I w before I did anything, I wanted to see that particular. Once I was able to see Roadrunner and Wally e. Coyote, once I was able to see him, I was good. But it never dawned on me then. When I was a child, I wasn't thinking about that. It didn't dawn on me then, but it dawned on me now how much violence is in art. Where, but but it's not just cartoons. Not just cartoons. Let's talk about the paintings of the old masters. How you have yeah, you'll have you'll have war scenes. You'll actually have. You actually have royalty make murals. Well, so royalties will have murals commissioned to de to describe a battle they had. Like they like they want a battle of, of such and such, and they want it to be described in a mural because there were there were no cartoons then, there were no you know things like that. So you had to really do whatever you could. So the the royal family of that of that day or of that land would say. Make me a mur mural of the battle of such and such. And 
they would do it, and all you would see is like a ten foot long, eight foot high canvas painted with a whole bunch of bloody scenes. This person is being disemboweled over here. This person is decapitated. This person got a spear stuck through they through their head. This person got got is being eaten by a dog. Stuff like that. Or you'll have like a um, scene from the Sistine Chapel or Michelangelo. And you'll have a scene where where, where, the, where the people are in, are in hell and they're being torn apart and skin. There's actually a scene in the Sistine Chapel where people, like the person's skin is off their body and it's being thrown on the ground. Like they're flat. Like crazy. Or you will have something like um, the painting of a, of Dante's Inferno. You know Dante, you know with the nine circle, uh, the nine realms or nine floors, we will call it of hell, and, and each one is like a different level. And the further down you go, the farther down you go, the more gruesome the scene gets. Right now, these were paintings done. These were paintings commissioned by maybe a rich family, something like that, and they wanted an artist to paint this. So the artist would paint it, but and these would be considered masterpieces in art, right? It'd be considered masterpieces. But do the people do do people actually take note of how violent these scenes are? And do people do people really take into account how violent these scenes are? Because you have you have sculptures, you have sculptures of uh, like a Perseus holding the head, holding the severed head of Medusa. That's that's a violent scene. In the story of Perseus, you no know, Perseus and Pegasus, Perseus cuts off the head of Medusa, the Gorgon, Medusa, and hold, holds her head. So that's that's a violent scene. Or an image of the twelve tribes of, of Hercules. Uh, you no, know, taking the skin of the Nemean lion, like, like he skinned the lion. That's violent. Or when you tell the story of why Hercules had to do the twelve trials, he killed his family. There are paintings done of that that you, that you see all in museums. You see a whole what you see museums all over the world, and it'll be the the. the the painting would be huge. The painting would be massive. The painting, the painting would be so massive, it would have its own wall. A wall made specifically for that giant mural. And all you can see from the left panel to the right panel is violence. Blood. But no one, no one goes into the museum thinking that, oh my God, this is horrible. There's so much violence. In these paintings, however, you will hear there's so much violence in cartoons, there's so much violence in video games. Two two forms of art. Also, writing. Writing is a form of art. It's literature and art. There's violence in writing. There's violence in movies. Harry Potter. A whole bunch of violence in Harry Potter. People died. Pe people died. I actually actually looked up in Harry Potter the the spell of Bada Kedavra. Everybody knows that. So whoever watches Harry Potter, they heard that spell before. I looked up the word. That's an actual word. It's a legitimate word. It's the opposite of abracadabra. Avada Kedavra, abracadabra. I looked at the words. Abracadabra is I speak what I see. Avada Kedavra is I destroy what I see. That's why it's called the killing curse. I destroy what I see. That's what the word Avada Kedavra means. I destroy what I see. That's Movies and theaters is a form of art. There's violence in art. I mean, there's violence in movies. There's, but it's not, it's not just, you no know, cultures all over the world have this. There's, there's violence in every single culture. So, is it just that Human beings are violent by nature. Are we innately violent? And we just put it, we express it in a visual or an 
audio form or a written form? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but how often, how often do we see a violent painting? And just think about that. Just think about the times you had art class, right? And your teacher said to open up your art book. And you flip through the pages. She says, okay. Or she says, she says okay, we're going to talk about the Renaissance period, right? We're going to talk about the Renaissance period and the masters of the Renaissance period. You know who they are. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, uh, Bernini, um, was it? Uh, Donatello, Raphael, Donatello was in the early part of the uh, Renaissance, you know, Leonardo and, and Michelangelo in the middle, Raphael was like more later Renaissance, which had Bernini, the, all, all these all these artists who did, who, who were commissioned by powerful families, like the Medici's and, and the um, the uh, Sforza, uh, Sforza, if I'm pronouncing that right. Like, these were families, powerful families, during that time in Europe, Italy to be exact, during the Renaissance, where they, where they would patronize artists, and they would, they would commission the artists to do paintings. And some of those paintings that they were commissioned to do were war scene paintings. They, they, they were scenes from wars. You have, like, the... Um, Battle of the Roses in you no know, uh, Northern Europe, you no know, London, all that stuff. You have the families fighting. When a battle was done, you want you wanted to commemorate the battle, like, especially if you won. Now, now, nine times out of ten, if the battle is lost, that family or that person is not usually going to commission a painting. They're not going to commission a painting of a loss. Not really, no. So when who, whoever won the battle, whoever won the battle will commission a painting to commemorate their victory. And you always have the head person, the general, or whoever was in charge, the king, always on top of a, of a horse looking very, very, you know, stoic, things like that, and looking very, very shiny. And then you'll see a battle scene of just disemboweled bodies and animals eating people and horses kicking people and people stabbing horses and decapitated heads and Blood everywhere. Right? Violence across the board on the painting. You'll also have... Let's, let's go back even further. Let's go back even further in time. What about... Islamic paintings? There's, there's violence in there. You have... Old Christian paintings. Or Coptic. No, they won't. They won't. They won't call Christians back. They will call Coptics, right? It's another another story. Don't we ain't got over that. The point is, what about paintings of the crucifixion of Jesus? I mean, not only, not only is, not only are there paintings of a violent death of Jesus. It's also written about a violent death of Jesus. Okay? So it's written about and it's painted. You also have Egyptian stories of Asar and Set. How Set cut, uh, cut up his brother Asar into 14 pieces. Those are, those are carved, because carving is a form of art. Those are carved and painted on the walls of the temples. Okay, so then you have the, the, the story of Heru or Horus fighting his uncle Set. And that fight there was, was, was a violent fight. And you may have the story, the story of Anpu or Anubis, you know, taking the person who was deceased, who's recently deceased, to the halls of Ma'at to have his feather weighed by the, have his heart weighed by the feather of my art, on the feather of truth. And it was said that if your heart was heavier than the feather of truth, then you weren't living right. That's why that's what, what the expression, my heart is heavy. That's an expression from ancient Egypt. That's where the expression comes from. My heart is heavy. And 
Anku or Anubis is where you get the story from uh, Cerberus. Cerberus is the guardian of Tartarus. Is the guardian of, of Hades. Hades is the is the, the Greek god of the underworld. Hades is Pluto. The Greek god of the underworld and he lives in Tartarus. Tart uh, Cerberus was a three-headed dog who guarded the underworld in ancient Greece. Anubis or Anku was the guardian of the underworld in ancient Egypt. He was a guardian. And he would he would he would take the person who's deceased, take him through the halls of Ma'at, where he would be judged by the feather of Ma'at. Because feather you no, know, because Ma'at you know, is, is the deity, you no, know, the goddess of or the nature of truth, righteousness, reciprocity, balance. Okay? And it would take your heart, your literal heart, put it on the scale of Ma'at. That's why Lady Justice, the Lady Justice is Lust Justice is blind with the, the scale. That comes from ancient Egypt. It's a different story. It's one that 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 comes from ancient Egypt. And then once you were judged, whether it be good or bad, like if you if your heavy if your heart was heavier than the feather, you will be thrown into the river Happy, a Happy River or the Nile. We be eating my catfish. Okay, and that judgment will come by way of Asar, because Asar was the the nature of the underworld. Because remember, he was killed by his brother Set. Remember that. So he was killed by his brother Set. He's the no, he is the. The, the awake, you know, is the awakening. Okay, so all of these, they, then you have stories like from India of the Asuras and Indra, not Naruto, which is also violent, but in the actual in the actual stories from India, you have the Asuras, which were actually the bad guys. Or the demons, I should say. I don't say bad, whatever. Then you have Indra, which literally meant king of the god, king of the gods. Indra m means in Sanskrit, king of the gods, and they fought against, and he and he fought against the Ashuras. The Ashuras were the bad guys, but in Naruto, Ashura was the good guy. Indra was the bad guy. That's where they. That's where they got the act. That's where. Naruto got the story from, it was a, it's a story from India. But in the actual story, the literal story, Ashura, the Asuras, there was, there was a bunch of them. The Asuras, they were the bad guys. Indra was the good one. Okay? But there was violence there. They always fought. There was violence there. So, cultures all over the world have violence. And that violence goes into the arts. It goes into the art because you pretty much you pretty much making a painting or a drawing of your environment. So if you see violence, you're going to depict violence. It's a part of your life. Like just like you would see something good, you you would paint that, or you would draw that, or you would carve that, or you would write about it. You see bad, you paint that, you draw that, you write about it, you carve it. Same thing. So. You all, you it's, it's, it seems like you almost can't have art without having violence. I've I've even done I've even done drawings that are violent. I've done plenty of drawings that are violent. I did I did a I did a uh, I did like a four panel Walking Dead drawing. Violence in there, a bloody spike bat, zombies with a decapitated zombie with it, with eye popping out. That's violent. So even I do it. Because it's it's a it's a part of, it's a part of it's a part of, hu of human nature. Violence is a part of human nature. There's never been a time in human history where there were any, where it weren't violence. Even if a human goes to kill an animal, that's still violent. Because violence can also be beneficial when you need to eat something. So that's just how that go. But violence in terms of art. Violence, you know, violence in art is, 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 is it goes hand in hand. You can't name me. We can't name me one period of time in human history where there's been art displayed in any form. Art displayed in any form, whether it be writing, movies, even even in dance, operas, 
drawings, paintings, carvings, sculpture. Like you could any 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 genre of art you can name. Poetry, rap, R and B songs, any form of art you can name. I sh- I assure you, you will find art. You will you will find violence in there somewhere. You will find violence in there, right? So that that's my coast they go. You will find violence in art. So this you can't one me out the other. So what do you do about it? How how do you how do you deal with how do you deal with violence in art? How do you deal with that? Because when it comes to a painting. When it comes to like like a a six hundred year old painting, I don't hear a lot of talk about violence in that as I do a Tom and Jerry cartoon. When I can actually, I, well, I can make an argument that the paintings from six hundred years ago are more violent, or depicted as more violent than the Tom and Jerry cartoon. So, where it, what is going on where people see? When people see um, Dante's Inferno and don't think they don't think violent. Well, they do think violent, but they don't. They don't really. They don't really interpret violent the same way when it comes to that as opposed to a video game or like what's the difference between Mortal Kombat X and Dante's Inferno? The painting. What's the difference between Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat Period? And Dante's Inferno. The only difference I see is that a Mortal Kombat game is in motion, but an old painting of a war scene is a still is a still painting. There's nobody moving, but you see the exact same things in both. You see a head being chopped off in Mortal Kombat. You see a head being chopped off in a painting. You see disemboweling in a Mortal Kombat. You see disemboweling in a war painting. What's the difference? Why? Here's a question. How come the museums don't censor war paintings, but the public... Let me say. say, No, I'm not the museum. How come the public doesn't censor a war painting, but the public wants to censor a violent video game? Think about that. I've never heard of people protesting... A war scene painting. Or I've never heard people protesting a wartime photograph. Because remember you had you had, you had pictures from all the way from from the Civil War to now. That where people took pictures of individuals in war. We see you like like the picture the picture of the the, the, the Asian man with a gun to his head. And there's a soldier holding a gun to his head, about to shoot. You see, the, you see the man like this. That picture has not been censored by the public. However, a video game will be censored. Why is that? Kids can go see both. I've been to the Holocaust Museum, the Holocaust Museum in Washington D.C. What's the difference? Between seeing a picture of violence there, because what Hitler did to the Jews there in in uh, in during the Holocaust was extremely violent, extremely violent. But where's the disconnect? Where's the disconnect? Is it because the video game is fantasy? Is that is that is that why? Because it's fantasy, you can just you can say okay, get rid of it because it's fantasy. But a war painting, I mean, let's be honest, a war painting could also be false propaganda. A war painting from the Crusades can also be false propaganda of that time. Like that, that could have been the false propaganda of a thousand years ago. Because propaganda has always been around. 
as long as there's been human beings telling stories, there's always been propaganda. So there very well could be propaganda from a thousand years ago from the Crusades. But when you see a painting, no, I've never heard someone protest a painting of the Crusades from a thousand years ago. Well, a thousand plus years ago. I've never heard the public protest Take down the Crusades painting. Take down the Crusades painting. I've never heard that been done. But I've heard and I've seen people protest violent lyrics. I remember I remember when um, NWA and Two Live Crew were out and they, and they were popping, they were heavy. How people would actually take steamboats and roll over their records and they would throw, like, see Dolores Tucker. No shot, no shade. Like, would throw... And break the CDs and throw and throw the thing down. I remember that. I I was alive on that. I saw that. I saw them throw the throw the records down and step on it and stuff. But they'll go to a museum and say this painting of the Crusades is a masterpiece, huh? At least you know that the the lyrics you hear on music are fantasy. But the Crusades was real. The Crusades was a real event. People really died. People were actually disemboweled. People were decapitated. People were eaten, eaten by, by dogs. Horses were stabbed. Horses were stabbed by spirits from the soldiers. Soldiers were trampled on by horses. This stuff really happened. And they did paintings of it. They did, they did a 10 foot long and an 8 foot high mural of it. But no one... No one no one ever protested that. But music lyrics are censored. You would take your child to see a war painting, but you won't allow your child to listen to violent lyrics. So, are they both masterpieces? Mm, something to think about. Anyway, I've been rambling on for too long. Thank you all for listening. Leave a comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will catch you all later. Peace.